Ladies and gentlemen, what they're asking us is, provided we have an angle that's in, that's in radian measure of 3 pi over 4, determine the quadrant that the angle is going to lie in. So the first thing we want to do is just kind of go back and remember the quadrant. So when we first started in the Cartesian coordinate system, you know, remember we plotted like points, you're giving coordinate points and say, you know, which coordinate point, uh, which quadrant does your coordinate points go in? So if you could just kind of go in counterclockwise, you can say there's the quadrant grid. All right? Now, through the videos I was saying, when we're going to graph an angle, we're going to be graphing angles in what we call standard form. All right? And when we're graphing angles on standard form, we're going to have our x-axis represent our initial side. So that is coming from our standard form. Now what we need to do is I need to draw the second ray, 3 pi over 4, rotating with a vertex at the origin, rotating from our initial side. So our terminal side is going to be a rotation over from there. So now I just need to determine you know, what is 3 pi over 4. Um, so I'll just go back through a quick little demonstration. If you guys looked at a circle, remember we called this length the radius. And if we were to take our radius, and wrap it around, we call that a radian. And if I do that, let's go a little bit farther. If I do that, what I'll notice is I have one, two, three radians that go halfway around a circle. But it doesn't go all the way exactly around the circle. So to all the way around the circle is what we call 3.14159 dot dot dot, or simply pi. So what that represents is halfway from if I say, here's my terminal side all the way to my, I'm um, sorry, my initial side all the way to my terminal side, that angle would be pi. So an angle like this is pi, right? But we don't want pi. We want 3 fourths of pi, right? 3 pi over 4 is the same thing as 3 fourths pi. Does that make sense? So we got to be able to cut this into fourths. So if I do line here, that's in halves. Now it's in quarters. So you could say pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. So therefore, you can see my angle is from here to here. So that would be 3 pi over 4. Now we just need to determine what quadrant that it's in. And you guys can see that it's in quadrant 2. OK? Make sense? Yes, question? Ooh. Mm -hmm. like, um, could you also do it like? Like two pi is the other side, so if you like just do like cos squared or four pi, you wrap around twice, and then you just like split the top into four. Is it the same thing? Say what? Never mind. No. You mean two pi going all the way around? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it was always on the x, either on the x-axis or the y-axis, which quadrant would it technically be? It would not be in a quadrant, and you would say it does not lie in a quadrant; it lies on the x or the y-axis. Okay. Yes. Let's do a problem like that next. So I'm going to leave my diagram of radians up there. 